Hey guys, welcome to Flatlander Forge. I'm Stephen Brady, and today we're going to forge a nut cutter. Let's start crafting. All right, so today I'm going to document the forging of a nut cutter. It's used to castrate cows, so this is a custom order I have. And uh, hopefully it's going to have an integral finger hole for your index in it. So it's kind of like a little cleaver um, type blade that cowboys use to castrate bulls. So this is a chunk of W2 tool steel, tool steel here. So I'm going to see if I can't shape shift this around a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is start forging the set down that's going to get pulled out into the blade. Right now I'm working on the tip of the blade and uh, just getting ahead of the fish lipping. So I'm going to get like somewhat of a somewhat of a point started, even though this blade isn't going to have a point when it's done. The shape I'm going for is going to be uh, two segments like this with a bigger piece in the middle. Then I'm going to punch a hole and drift this out into a bigger finger hole. While you're forging, it's continually clean your steel, clean the scale off of it. And these butcher block brushes are great. So clean it at the beginning of your heat. Then you can get to forging. Right now, this is this will be my blade. I'm gonna have to keep a chunk of material that I'm gonna be able to drift a hole in and pull out a spot for your index finger. This hammer I'm using, uh, this was kind of a custom hammer that I had made for myself by my good buddy Ben Sneer from Clarendon, Texas. He's a hell of a hammer maker, and uh, I, I really wanted a hammer with this really rounded peen on it and a slightly cupped, big, fat face on it, and Ben whipped this up for me. So, yeah, go buy a hammer from Ben Sneer. Here's my super fancy punch, and I'm about to punch a hole that's going to eventually get drifted out to be the index finger hole. So a lot of, a lot of cowboys, they have to, I guess, put this nut cutter in their mouth when they're castrating cows, but this allows you to just keep it on your hand and not have to worry about it. So whenever you punch holes in hot steel, you gotta go about halfway through one side, and then you gotta flip it over and you gotta go through the other side, and if you get it lined up right, you'll get a nice little plug that'll come out. I got a good index point on there, so the next heat, I'll drive that plug through the pritchel hole over here. Okay, so I didn't get it lined up perfectly, but that's all right. Because there's the little plug. So I bas you basically just shear that right out of the steel. Okay, so my goal here is to get this hole drifted out big enough to where I can come on the point of this anvil and start working this around. So I'll probably need one more time with that drift. So I let the knife cool down to be able to feel it and like feel how I want to do the handle. And I kind of had a little cold shut on the back side of where I punched at, so I'm just grinding that out. And a cold shed is just where the steel has folded over onto itself, um, and there's kind of an inclusion in there, so I'm making sure to get all of that out before I go forward with forging it anymore. That's all she took. She just needed a little grinding to get that cold shed out. Um, maybe next time I can avoid that cold shut, but I don't know if I've said this, but this is the first time I've forged a knife like this, so. Now I'm just gonna stretch this blade out and hopefully get another half inch out of it. And I want to get it drawn out to at least three and a half. It's still pretty thick too. And 
really this kind of knife is damn near just a scalpel, so it don't need to be too thick. It ain't going to get pried on or anything. You need a good thin edge, and uh, you don't need a blade that's that thick either, because this blade is 5 30 seconds thick, and I want it closer down more towards an eighth. And I'm using the horn of the anvil right here to pull it out. Um, you could use a straight peen for this, or you could even use your cross peen. Um, but I just like to use the rounded side of my hammer and this horn to just work it slowly and just get it pulled out. Okay, so now I'm going to work on drawing this blade out a little more, and I'm going to use the horn of my anvil to pull it out. So as I'm doing this, I'll do a pass, and then I'll take an overhead look at, at my spine and make sure it's pretty consistent. Um, especially if you're beginning, it's really easy to forge in a really narrow spot. Um, but with time, you can get better at getting your draw consistent um, and working at the right heat. So right now, I got my blade where I want it to be. I got my circle pretty much how I want it to be. Now I'm going to work on refining uh, my handle back here. So I have a little bit of extra meat here, which is good. Um, but I'm going to start doing a set down right behind uh, this ring and get this brought down a little more. The steel's hot. I'm going to start doing a set down right behind this finger hole. So I got my handle shaped pretty well. Um, I have a little bit too much material down here. So I'm going to use the good old hot cut right here that was formerly a truck axle that I made. So I could use the cutoff wheel, but we're blacksmithing. So we're going to do it traditionally. OK, you got to start your cut pretty slow on this because it's easy for it to jump around. So there's the slice that hot cut made in there. So then you just take it over your edge of your anvil. Just break that off. So I'm going to do one, maybe two heats. Get this, I'm going to get this handle pulled down a little bit here, and then we can go on to grinding. At this point, I'm done forging it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stamp it with my touch mark. Um, then I'm going to make it nice and straight and do a little bit of normalizing to uh, begin the heat treating of it. And normalizing just shrinks down that grain structure of the steel um, and gets it ready for the quench. Yeah, so I'm just going to work these little kinks out of here and get this nice and straight going into the normalizing process. This is the progress that I made tonight on this nut cutter. Um, I got it forged out to shape, um, I got it straightened, and then when we revisit, I'll uh, start the heat treating process, I'll normalize it, grind it, and then quench it. Since the last filming, I did quite a bit of work on this blade. I ground the blade and I used my 12 inch contact wheel to hollow grind it. Um, then I normalized it, um, quenched it, tempered it, and with my quenching, I clayed the spine of the blade. Um, and created a hamone on it. So this W2 tool steel is really good steel at making a good expressive hamone that really pops. Um, and on a blade like this, it's really more for looks than uh, function. Um, but it's pretty much just a, a soft spine and then a hard cutting edge. Um, cleaned up this finger hole with a Dremel tool, made it nice and smooth. Um, and now we're gonna get started on doing the handle. After you drill, after you drill your pinholes, there's usually a little bit of blowout, so you just got to touch that up um, on your grinder and get that those little flanges of metal taken off there. So all it takes is just a little kiss on there to just get the, that little blowout off. So now we're going to move on to getting the handle material prepped and ready to be glued on. Okay, so here's my handle material. Um, it's mesquite burl that sta is stabilized, and then I have some black G10 liners in there. Um, and I just got the liners glued on to the scales. So I'm going to get this off here. So here's going to be the handle material. So there'll be a little black spacer that's between the tang. Um, the first thing I do, um, I'm going to take all this extra liner material off these scales. And then I'm going to draw out and get the top radius of my handle all sanded. So the only thing you really can't finish um, once it's glued up is that little top area on the knife. Okay, so now I got 
I got these handle materials prepped up, um, and I'm going to kind of draw out the outline I want for that top radius of my handle to be, and then I'm going to clamp them together and then do them both the same so I don't have to try to get them both you know, separate and different processes. I just get them clamped and then do it all in the same. That way they'll line up and be really symmetrical on both sides of the handle. Okay, so I get these handle scales lined up pretty good. Um, I got a little bit of excess material all the way around, so this doesn't have to be perfect. Um, and I just kind of envision how I want that top radius to be, um, and I usually just eyeball it. Okay, so I got the top part um, radiused and cupped a little bit, got it up to about 600 grit, and then I just buffed it really clean. Um, like I said, I like to get this completely finished before we glue on or drill pinholes or anything. Now I got my handle how I want it. I got it clamped up and I'm ready to drill these pinholes through. Um, I like to drill them like this. Um, that way when they line up, the top ridges of this handle are going to be lined up perfectly and there's not going to be any guessing of trying to drill one at a time. So whenever you're drilling, you want to make sure that you're holding contact um, with your drill press table um, and that way everything gets squared up and it, and it drills through nice and square. Okay, there's one hole, um, and you want to really work your drill bit through it very slowly. If you're putting a lot of pressure in it, you can blow out the wood on there. Um, sometimes I'll even put a piece of wood down that I'm drilling into, and that kind of helps avoid getting blowout on that hole, on the back of that hole. You got to continue to let your drill bit throw out all the shavings that are caught up in it. You'll get a nice cleaner hole that's drilled. Okay, so I got my uh, handle material drilled. I put some pins in there to hold it in place and now I'm just going to grind off the excess handle material here um, and it's going to make my post glue up finishing a lot easier. I'm not going to have to guess where my, where my tang is and I can get right in there and avoid really grinding into my tang where I don't want to. I got my handle scales shaped um, pretty roughly. Um, I got my pin material um, and I got this flattened and everything. So when I'm doing my pins, I always like to radius the top of them some. Um, when you snip them with a pair of dikes, they tend to mushroom out some and it makes it really hard to get it into, the, into your drill hole. Um, so when there's a little bit of a point on it, it really indexes nicely in there. Um, so now we're going we're gonna to get it glued up and clamped and let this epoxy cure. So I like to make sure to get all your surfaces nice and cleaned. Um, I prefer to use acetone. I got paint thinner and I think it does a pretty good job. So you want to make sure there's no oil that's on your surface um, and that'll really make a barrier where that epoxy won't be able to seal. And then on my handle material, I like to kind of score it and rough it up and that gives a little bit more purchase, a um, little bit more surface area for that epoxy to get caught on there. Um, I just make sure to not make any gouges towards the sides because that'll give your final fit and finish a little bit of uh, uncleanness. So now we are going to get the gluing process started. I like to get my pins where they're just poking through and that way it makes it really easy to index into your hole once you get your epoxy on there. So I always get ample epoxy on there because once you clamp it, it'll just squeeze out the side. So some guys are really conservative with their epoxy, but if there's too much in there, it's just going to get pushed out and it won't cause an issue at all. Got it pinned up and now it's time to clamp it and let this epoxy cure. Okay, there's usually always some degree of epoxy that gets uh, squeegeed out of the front here. And like I said, this is the only place you really can't clean up good. So I just make sure to get that excess epoxy cleaned off the top of this handle. Um, and then I usually try to wipe down some off the outside because it really gums up your grinder belts. But all that's going to be sanded again so it don't have to be, don't have to be too clean.
the epoxy has cured on this, um, so it's time to unclamp it, and then I can start shaping this handle on the belt sander. The first thing I'm going to do is just get the profile trued up on here, um, and then I'm going to go into shaping the exterior of it. So I got the profile of the knife ground, and now I'm just going to get the loose um, dimensions in it. So I'm going to taper this handle up. Um, and I'm going to do this all on my 36 grip belt that really hogs the material. And then I'll jump down to a finer grip belt and start doing some of the more delicate work. Here's a 220 grit scalloped belt that's slack. Um, it's got these ruffled edges so they don't cut in um, when I'm working on the radiuses here. Um, and I'm going to take the square out of here and start getting closer to my final shape. Here it is. This is the finished. This is the finished product here. The only thing remaining is to put an edge on it, and I will do that at home. Um, but yeah, this is what probably about eight hours of work looks like. Um, luckily, everything went well, and I'm really happy with my first integral index finger hole nut cutter. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you've liked what you saw, make sure to like and subscribe so you can see our further content. If there's anything you'd like to learn about blacksmithing or knife making, or anything you want to see me do, feel free to drop a comment below. Follow my previous work and my future work on my Instagram at Flatlander Forge, and stay tuned with all my updates. Keep crafting.